Jared Feather IFBB Pro has a full series on mastering full range of motion. I did my PhD on range of motion. Do he and I disagree about the importance of full range of motion? Well, let's watch this video and find out. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science and more specifically in range of motion. And today I'll be reacting to a video by Jared Feather teaching about full range of motion. I basically want to see do I agree with him when it comes to range of motion or not. Without further ado, let's get into it. What's up guys? You already saw a video where I put Tristan through a leg session with another one of my clients. But here we are again, he's joining me for my last hard leg session with somebody else that I'm actually putting in a vlog who was in, uh, where were we just, New York? New York, New York, New Jersey. So we were in New York slash New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, we all trained at a Jersey barbell together and you all will see that probably before this video, currently working on it. Um, but the Neil's a freak, he won Charlie Pro. Uh, we became really good friends there. I've seen him now like five separate times and just right. randomly it shows, right. which has been really neat. Um, so I'm gonna be putting Daniil and Tristan, who is currently my client, through a leg session. It's probably gonna be pretty brutal. Again, last hard leg session of my prep. Uh, so it's cool to have Daniil and Tristan both here. Pick my ass. Yeah. Three. yeah, three. So three sets here. Uh, my rep matching the first set like 15 to 25 on the first set. It's gonna be pretty hard. I'm subbing this out, guys, for uh, my glute ham raise, which was what was initially programmed on this day. But again, I take out the really super duper essentially damaging exercises and when I'm deep, deep in the prep, since I am a week and a half out and I have had hamstring curls in this master cycle on the other day, it's not a novelty stimulus. It's nothing that's not gonna, it's not gonna be too crazy. Three sets, I won't be too sore, and this will be safer. First up, seems like they're doing seated leg curls. I like to see a leg curl, probably the single best hamstring exercise when it comes to a leg curl variation. A study by my own colleagues compared the seated leg curl to a lying leg curl and generally found more favorable hamstring hypertrophy from the seated leg curl, which makes sense because they are more lengthened in an exercise. Sounds like he's usually doing glute ham raises instead for this exercise slot. Not a huge fan of glute ham raise, the resistance curve is very shortened biased. The lift is hardest in a relatively shortened position. But so far, seated light girl gets a thumbs up. Um, he's really just modifying a couple things today because he wants to jump in with me and train pretty hard. Leg resistance in place of leg press. Outside of that, the only thing really changing is the exercise order. He's doing his seated leg curls now, whereas he usually does them last. And we had a conversation on my channel about that. He says, he gets a good connection with his hamstrings. He usually does them at the end. He likes to do quads first, just for a weaker body part. But he's fine with doing this today, I think. But still going to do really well in his uh, leg press performance and his squat performance. And it's not too crazy novel of a stimulus. I believe he's also in his overreaching week. So yeah. we're both basically in our last hard week of training before we take a deload slash I'm going to be peaking. So. Yep. I really like the idea of starting the session with a seated leg curl because it doesn't impact performance on subsequent exercises. Now, full disclosure, the most up-to-date meta-analysis on the topic didn't find a difference on hypertrophy in terms of the order of exercises, so it doesn't seem like it's a hugely influential variable. But personally, I do like sequencing exercises in a way that minimizes the impact of one exercise on performance of the next. So if by starting with leg curls, your squat performance is unhindered, but starting with squats, your leg curl performance takes a hit, maybe starting with leg curls makes sense. And then we're basically just killing the needle. He probably trains hard anyway. Right? That's it. Can I put it to him? Well, it's going to be 15, 25. That's the first set. And then on the second set. Everyone's technique looks pretty solid here. Appropriate eccentric duration. Generally looks like they're pausing in the lengthened position, which might be a way to spend more time in that lengthened stretch position. Generally a pretty explosive concentric. I like the technique overall. So rest pause matching the first set. So he has a couple of these exercises on his, on his mesa cycle already in the app. So I'm gonna have him at least match or do what the app is having him do on those specific exercises. Obviously, when we get to leg extensions, he's not doing those, he's doing leg press instead. So we'll go in, we'll swap out that exercise and he'll just be doing what I'm doing for today. Uh, but everything else that's on there, like squats, lunges, 
He's going to do that specifically for what the app is telling you to do. When it comes to the Maya rep match technique, I don't know. I think it's fine. I think straight sets will work just as well. I don't think there's an inherent advantage to using Maya rep match over straight sets. Honestly, it is probably just mostly a way to keep training interesting and engaging. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I am good. You got to get Pause. What do you have? Plus 21. 21. Tristan's technique here was awesome. I like the pause at low muscle lengths. I like the explosive eccentric. Looks like he went pretty close to failure here as well. One thing or one tip I like to give people for the seated leg curl to increase the stretch even further is to lean forward in the seat. By increasing the amount of hip flexion, you're increasing the stretch on the hamstrings even further, which, judging by the study by my own colleagues, may even give you a little bit of additional hypertrophy. Yeah. There you go. Get it. Come on. Oh. Oh, fuck. Or, you know, you're close to a show and you're fucking ten head bangs. <laughs> <laughs> Broadly speaking, I like Jared's technique as well here. I think he's doing a good job of accentuating lower muscle length through the tempo, making sure to pause in a lengthened position. Personally, I like to lean forward to increase the stretch even more. I like to lengthen partials on the bike curl while doing so, but this is pretty solid regardless. <laughs> So now on the next one, basically what you're going to be doing is going until you're about one in the tank. So you might get like 15 rest balls at the top and then until you get to 19. So if you get 14, pause, three, pause, two, and you do it. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. Fucking count filter. I've been to my gym. Yeah. Why do I do the number things? Yeah. I did the second pause with the couple. I love it because it also makes you go full range of motion before it counts the fucking rep. That's what I hate about yeah, it. Yeah, I love like, it. have to fully open food. So, without knowing the full context of the person Jared's training with here that isn't Tristan Lee, Fugar's name entirely, my bad. I'm not a huge fan of Jared making him pause in the shortened position. Context, he's Jared's client. Obviously, if he's dealing with some pain or what have you, anything to justify that approach, totally understandable. But on principle, I am not a fan. I think that's a mistake. Generally, it's essentially making you spend more time in the relatively shortened position. When we have around 25 studies on muscle length at this point, generally lending credence to the idea that training at shorter muscle lengths is probably worse for muscle growth than training in length positions. And so if we're accentuating the shortened position even more by spending time in that shortened position and pausing there, probably not the best deal for hypertrophy. Good. Oh. 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 It looks like Jared had quite a few reps in the tank there. Not sure if that was intentional. Generally, I'd recommend taking sets a little bit closer to failure than what he did here. That's why three sets, I think Daniil is going to be good. Uh -huh. Three sets here, maybe two sets on leg press for you. One or two sets in the squats and like a set of lunges. That'll be fine. Like you see a lot of people doing like uh, five sets per exercise, seven exercises. Nah, it's ridiculous. And you keep injury pretty low like that too. Hell yeah. So muscle activation. Yeah, it's just a technique. Really good technique, slow and controlled, full range of motion. Yeah. Shit like this, the intensity techniques. We're gonna do a mile rep mass on leg press too. <laughs> so I do think that if your tempo is dog shit, if your range of motion is dog shit, and you go from that to having a more controlled eccentric, say at least a second or two per rep, and all of a sudden you're incorporating the stretch position 
you may need to do less volume to get the same overall amount of hypertrophy. But I think he's being a bit hyperbolic here saying that, oh, you go from needing seven exercises of five sets each to only needing like one or two sets per exercise. I think that's a bit hyperbolic. We're working with everybody's specific anthropometry, which I always talk about. You guys have seen me talk about that a million times. Daniil's a little more narrow. He has really fucking good hip and ankle mobility. So Daniil's a little more low, narrow, you're gonna see in the video. Um, opens the hips really well, gets super deep. Uh, Tristan's more like me, ankle mobility's not really quite there. That's why he has in the Nikes. I have on my uh, Adidas power lifts. Mine have an inch heel lift instead of three quarter. So me and Tristan have a little bit wider stance, more of a hip open toe out. Daniil's a little different. So you guys, for your anthropometry, keep those kinds of things in mind. If you're lower on the pad, you're probably gonna have to point the toes out a little more. If you're higher on the pad, and your hips are wide, that might make up for the toes not being pointed out as much. Play with your foot position, get as much forward knee flexion as possible. That's gonna benefit your quads way, way more. Agreed here, I like the technique being displayed by all three of them. Ideally, I'd like to see them pause at the bottom. Not a huge difference, but it might accentuate the length of position a bit more. They could do partials. Again, I'm just splitting hairs because I, I in fact, did my PhD on range of motion. But um, overall, really solid. The one thing I'll say about the leg press and something I disagree with Dr. Mike Isretal and Jared Feather on is the usefulness of the leg press as a quad exercise versus like a glute exercise. I actually think that the leg press is probably a better glute exercise and adductor exercise compared to a quad exercise. When you break it down, a leg press is a lengthened partial for the gluteus maximus. You start the lift in 90 degrees of hip flexion and you go into a fully lengthened position for the glutes provided you do it properly. Meanwhile, for the quads, it's a full range of motion, which is totally fine, but based on some more recent evidence, most of which was on the quads, by the way, lengthened partials might actually lead to more growth compared to a full range of motion. And so if I had to say the leg press was squarely a quad exercise or a glute exercise, I would probably put it more so into the glute category, which is totally fine, just something to be aware of. My load re is reduced from the previous week. I'll try to remember to put those cards up here, but you'll see I was 495 for sets of 10 to 15. This week I did 455 for sets of 10 to 15. Uh, lowering the load to get more reps, it's a good idea. Just deep into prep. Again, not worried about the weight in the bar. I'm worried about coming in here and getting the fucking volume in. So we're gonna move on to squats. And then I, I will potentially cut out lunges too because lunges are one of those exercises that cause a shitload of eccentric damage to my glutes. Lunges are one of the best glute builders. Um, because my glutes need to come in for my show, I try to stop training those about two weeks out. Um, it creates less inflammation. And as you guys know, DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness actually inhibits the uptake of blood glucose into glycogen quite a bit. So if I'm going into this next week's with sore glutes, as I begin my carb up, my glutes might not look the way I want them to look because I'm not uploading, or I'm not uploading, <laughs> uptaking that uh, blood glucose into glycogen and really filling out my glutes the way I want to. So lunges might also be taken out. We'll see how I feel after squats. Um, we're gonna get to squatting. I'll be making a little bit of modifications to their technique on this as well. Especially Daniil, I assume. He hasn't really squatted with me before. So let's get to it. I think Jared is generally correct here about avoiding really damaging training right before a show as this can inhibit glucose uptake into the muscle and thus the peaking process. However, one thing I'll pick up on real quick is that he said it was delayed onset muscle soreness that was inhibiting glucose uptake into the muscle and therefore interfering with the peaking process. But in reality, that is the muscle damage process, not the soreness process. And importantly, soreness is not really a solid predictor of muscle damage. So let's try not to conflate muscle damage and delayed onset muscle soreness. They are not the same thing. And in general, from what I've seen, Renaissance periodization tends to prioritize using soreness as a proxy for muscle damage or recovery or what have you a lot more than I would be comfortable with. So it's like, just like weight press, <clears throat> Yes, yes. Uh. Again. 
I suspect that they both had quite a few more reps left in the tank here. Could be mistaken, it's always difficult for someone else to gauge your proximity to failure, but I suspect he had a lot more reps in. Same with Jared here. I'm worried he's only a few weeks out from his show from looks of things, looking stacked, looking lean, but he had a lot more reps in the tank. What I will say is all of their techniques were really solid. Good eccentric, good control at the bottom, even paused at the bottom, really solid squad technique for hypertrophy. This set of squats for Jerry looked a lot better. I'm a big fan of the split squat variation they were showing earlier. I think it's a great way to get really stretched quads, glutes, adductors, get a lot of stimulus in. It's more stable by virtue of holding onto something with the contralateral arm. I personally like holding onto something else as well if necessary, like a rack or anything else really, rather than a broomstick. Using a Smith machine can work instead. Or my all-time favorite split squat variation has to be the safety bar. If you do these split squats with a safety bar in a rack and you're able to hold on to the rack, ooh, you can do some crazy things in there. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Taking the lunges out, like I said. Um, since I'm not doing my lunges, they actually have programmed Bulgarians, so they're going to do the Bulgarians. I'm going to give them those same coaching cues I kind of did with Tristan last time. We're going to see how bad we can hurt uh, Daniil today, guys. It's going to be fun. Uh, in insert Daniil's wincing face here. And uh, let's see what happens. Jared looks pretty fucking dead. All right, everyone. That was the session. So that was Jared's leg day with a couple of friends, a couple of clients specifically as well. Started with some seated leg curls, then moved into some leg pressing, then moved into some squatting, and then moved into some split squats for some of them. Sounds like a pretty quad emphasis leg day, which is totally fine. I do suspect that the split squats at the end might have been a bit superfluous unless they were training quads like once a week or once every two weeks even, because ultimately the movement pattern involved in the leg press, in the squat, and in the split squat are all pretty similar. We're talking about simultaneous knee extension and hip extension on all three exercises. Generally, their technique was super solid. I think they emphasized the stretch pretty well on most exercises. Full range of motion, which is ultimately what they're known for. I personally disagree with such a strong stance on full range of motion being best, but hey, that is just a difference in opinion. I like the fact that they started off with leg curls before doing their quad training. I think a lot of their sets were relatively submaximal, whether by design or not, I'm not sure. Generally, I would have liked to see them take sets a little bit closer to failure for better hypertrophy. But overall, honestly, pretty solid. I'd give this like a, a seven or eight out of 10. So that was me reacting to Jared Feather's Mastering Full Range of Motion series. If you enjoy the video, leave a comment down below letting me know who else you want to see me react to. Leave a like as well, and maybe subscribe and hit the bell. I know like 50% of you aren't subscribed, so I really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Finally, if you'd like me to coach you, consider checking out the link above and that could become a thing. In the meantime, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.